how to create curved text like this amazing curved header here that I have in my example. I'm going to be recreating this from scratch and walking you through step by step. We're going to use an SVG drawing tool online called Boxy SVG and we're going to use Replit as a simple text editor. So just to show you what our aim is at the end, I've got my little title box here. Um, SVG itself looks like another box. So basically I just put a box in a box and then overlapping it I have my drawing. So from HTML's perspective, I've got this big square with a drawing in it, and then I have absolute position overlapping this details, which has padding to make it get out of the way of the curved text. Um, and if I look inside of the curved text in my SVG, I have this text path, and that itself, as you can see, is being laid out in SVG um, with all of our font information. Um, this language here, SVG, similar to HTML, it uses tags in a very similar way, but it's a language for making drawings. All right, so now let's get back to our uh, replit and show you where we begin. So um, before we start this process, before we have the whole SVG box, um, it's important that you already know roughly how big you want your text to be, get the fonts in there, get everything looking right so you can begin. So in my case, I have this title box and I know from my CSS that that is 600 pixels wide by 150 pixels tall, and that's where I'm going to want my curve. Remember, everything is a rectangle to HTML, so if you have some shape that's going to be curvy, whatever rectangle contains that curve is the size that I'm talking about. So our first step is we're going to get the text all styled, and I'm going to know the size of the box, in my case 600 by 150. And then I can go to Boxy SVG, and there's a little ruler on the right that says Geometry. I can click on there, and where it says view box, there's a width and a height, and I'm gonna go ahead and set those to whatever size I determined that rectangle should be. So I'm gonna say 600 by 150. That's gonna make my rectangle the right size. All right, next step is I'm gonna draw a text path. On the toolbar on the left, there's a text with a little arc under it. That stands for text path. We can draw as complicated a shape as we want. If you had text in loop-de-loops or circles or squares, you could do all that with text paths. Almost all the time in designs, we just have a simple curve. And if you draw a simple curve, the simplest thing to do is begin with a line. I know that's counterintuitive, but I'm just gonna drag what looks like a straight line. I'll show you why I did that. When I click on this second tool here, which says edit, not the first pointer, but the second one, edit, I can see right away the way that my line works. In my case, I actually accidentally made three points um, so my line has got one path here and one path here. I'm going to click on the middle one and hit backspace because I really just want this to be as simple as possible. When I click on the line, you may see a little red circle. That's called a control point. If you don't see a control point, if you drag that blue line and just start dragging, you'll see the control point show up. And basically each dot in an SVG path has a curve associated with it and can be dragged around. Um, most likely what you want is something that feels pretty symmetrical. So I'm gonna take these two control points and drag them. Um, I'm assuming, again, in most designs, symmetry is kind of a goal. This tool doesn't let us center the text. We're gonna center it when we copy it over, so don't worry about that. Once we're feeling good about our path, um, we can go down to Elements, and that will let us see the SVG. So here's our um, defined path. There's our, these numbers basically correlate to the four points that define this path. Um, and then there's the text. And if we click on the top level SVG element, I can right click, copy outer SVG, and I can then come into my HTML and I can paste that SVG in. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and comment out my original header. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna come back to my index and a few important things. First of all, um, I can expand that SVG box. I can see where it says enter your text here and I'll just change that to um, whatever the text is that I wanted in my header. 
Um, two other things that are worth doing on that text path where it says x link href equals path zero, we're going to add a new command which says uh, start and then offset. The offset is in capital letters or capital O, and we're going to do 50%. That is going to make it start the text in the middle so that it gets centered. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is move to the style equals. Then I'm going to delete all the existing styling because I don't want the style that came from that editor. I want the style that comes from my own design. Now I can come into my style.css and I'm going to make a rule for text. I've already written this rule, so um, we'll just show you what it looks like. I've got the font family, font weight, font size. Instead of color, I use the word fill. And instead of text align center, I say text anchor middle. And when I run this, it's now going to anchor my text to the center um, of the original um, path. And there I can see my curved header looks pretty darn good. All right. One problem, of course, is at this point, the example that's supposed to come underneath the curved header is uh, not coming underneath the curved header. It's sort of uh, falling way down here, and that's because the SVG takes up the full size of this width. So um, I think I had that thing called details. There it is. So there's the details that I wanted to position. There's a few ways to handle this. Um, one way to handle this is just to take details and add a negative margin to the top of it. So negative margin says go backwards and overlap the previous element. So if I just take details and I say negative 100 pixel margin, and I run this, now the details came up. Normally they would have started here, and instead they're starting 100 pixels up. And I can adjust that and put that exactly where I want. Um, that's probably the easiest way to nestle something up there. Um, another way to handle positioning, if you prefer, is you can use absolute positioning. So if my outer box gets a relative position, the SVG can be positioned absolutely. And if I use that approach, instead of doing a margin top negative 100 pixels, I would want to add some padding. And now I can move it. Um, down from the top. So instead of moving it up from the bottom, I can move it down from the top. I'll do 45 pixels. That's going to be very similar. What's happening in this case is basically my absolute positioned SVG is now ignored in the layout. So the SVG just goes on top and then I can position the text in terms of the parent wherever I want it. All right, there you go. That's the full uh, rundown. So we get our text style. We know the size of it. We resize our SVG. We go ahead and we draw a path and boxy. We copy it in. We add the start offset 50%. Um, we add fill for our text color, text anchor for middle, and then rules like font size, font family, uh, text shadow, and all of that work exactly as we expect them to. And there we go. We got our header done. Hope that's helpful.